the second uh, breakout session of this morning. Gala always wanted to be something new, and, and we're particularly happy to have Olga speaking because we have new face that Olga uh, explained to you guys how the life uh, at uh, SLV is going to be like. Welcome to our presentation. It is called, as you see, my quality translations, myth or reality, and SLV's perspective. And just before we proceed, I would like to tell a few words about our company. Uh, we are called the Intex Translation Company. We are located in Petrovsk, Ukraine, and uh, we translate into our native languages, which are Russian and Ukrainian. So, why have we decided to go here and make this presentation? Because we wanted to show um, what being an SLV looks like. How does it feel to be an SLV as a part of localization team? And in that respect, what is high quality to us and how do we uh, provide high quality? Imagine uh, car racing, Formula One. Uh, high speed, uh, every second counts, every bit of a second counts. Uh, you should be as fast as possible, as fast as you can. And basically, SLV is just like a pit stop uh, team. The car is text for translation. Then the pilot would be the freelancer, the translator. Uh, SLV would be the pit stop team, the boss of the team for a, a movie. And then end client, well, end clients are usually pay, they get money, so uh, they will be sponsors of the racing team. So we all have one goal in this game. We want to win the race, we want to see our car crossing the uh, finish line first. And in other words, we want to achieve high quality. This is just our definition of, of what high quality means. A freelancer for the pilot, he wants to be as fast as he can. He wants to show his professionalism and he wants to receive good reward for the job he does. So basically high quality to him is a combination of those two factors. To SLV, to the pit stop team, they want to see their boss happy. To MLV, or the team of the boss, he's connected to sponsors, so he wants to see his client satisfied, because if sponsor is happy, you get more projects, you get more money, you get more job, and everyone's happy. And as for the young clients, they don't really care about um, how the translation is done, uh, who does it, as long as it secures um, that everything is okay with the financial part. Like someone says here already, cash is the only thing that matters. Um, how can we get uh, high quality? We kept studying, we kept searching the materials, um, we uh, searched the internet and um, really if you look into the internet resources you will be able to find a lot of information, lots of reports, forums, news newsletters. Uh, so, you have a lot of materials on how to manage high quality, how to manage translation. Best tips look like this. Use effective TM and glossary policy. Create clear guidelines. Know what software can and cannot do. Respect deadlines but consider human factors. Leverage with metrics. Lower risk with plan B. Continue improving the process. Yeah, some people also say that to establish good communication with your clients or your suppliers, you can bring vodka or while you're here from Bechirovka or beer with them. That's also really nice. Yeah, that's not top secret. Those uh, practices are good. They are working. Probably we have to start reading between the lines or we have to face the fact that sometimes uh, best practices do not help SLV at all in practice. Right now I'm going to give you some examples of that uh, not helping and it's going to be like a little story of one week of a project manager in our company. It's based basically on facts and on uh, my letters from my email box. So Monday, I uh, go to work, I start my computer and I see we received a new uh, project from our good client. I study the materials and I see there's a glossary and we have to follow it strictly because it is approved. If we look into that uh, glossary right now, we can see that the first line is definitely just not translated. The second line, um, I don't know how many ways are there to translate figures. Why is that there is a mystery. The third line, it's, I don't know what language is that, but definitely Dutch, okay. 
one white here, you see, and two uh, Russian variants of translation. So there's inconsistency right there in the glossary. And the last line, that's just clearly corrupted characters. You can you cannot use them in the translation. I write to my client, I explain the situation, and they say something like, yeah, yeah, okay, we will take care of that, but right now we ha you have to start translation because the project is quite urgent. So we started the translation, we completed, we delivered it to, our, to the client, and uh, in a few days they get back to us saying, oh, right now we received the approved version, please take care of it and update uh, the translation and the TM. But that's like 100 pages. As Gordon just earlier say, thank you very much, you made my day. <laughs> but I, I am a professional project manager, so I take some chocolates, I go to our proofreader, I explain all that to him and say, that's just something we have to do. In a few sleepless nights, he finally completes the update and we deliver the translation to our client. Everyone's happy and the new day comes. Now Tuesday.